Hey everyone, and welcome to Gaming Bench. What's the most popular game on the planet right now? Well, how about, what's the most popular game on Steam right now? It's Counter-Strike 2, and it's been the most popular pretty much since it came out. I mean, we had Counter-Strike, and then we got Counter-Strike Source, and then we got Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which was just kind of a slightly modernized graphics and stuff, and now we've got Counter-Strike 2. Maybe PUBG took over for a little bit, but mostly Counter-Strike has been at the top of the list for ages. And it got me wondering, like, just how fast can you run Counter-Strike 2 these days? It's a little more demanding than the previous Counter-Strike, and so I thought I'd put it through the ringer and picked out eight graphics cards representing the modern era from the very high end with the RX 7900 XTX and RTX 4080 Super to the mainstream RX 7900 GRE and RTX 4070. Then we got like the kind of budget RTX 4060 and RX 7600. And then we've got like the truly budget RTX 3050 and RX 6600. So those last two are like previous gen cards, but good enough, right? And of course, this is Counter-Strike 2. It can run on pretty much a potato. So I'm not going to bother with like the low settings or the medium or the high settings. We're just going to go to the maxed out, very high setting, which enables 8x multi-sample anti-aliasing. You know, MSAA has not been a thing in most games for like over a decade because it's been replaced by deferred rendering techniques and post-processing anti-aliasing filters like FXAA, SMAA, TAA, and newer stuff. You've got like DLSS and FSR doing AA type stuff. I guess DLAA is really what we're talking about. So we're just maxed out. I'm going to run 1080p, 1440p, and 4K on some very fast to some not quite so fast cards and see how it does. Um, benchmarking this game, you can't just like test in a live match because there's just too much randomness and variability, even if you're playing against bots. So luckily there's like the training practice mode and you can say no time limit. And so you can just run around the map. So that's what I did using the very popular dust map dust Two, which has been around for since the original counter-strike as well. And so I, I gave that a shot and performance would be lower if you were playing with other humans online and there were like explosions and gunfire and stuff going off i don't know that it'd be really that much slower but one of the interesting things that we'll see here is that the minimum frames per second or the one percent lows are a lot lower than the average frames per second so you know we're i've got video in the background here we've been showing like the 4060 and the 3050 and the 6600 and 7600 running the game at 1080p and you know i won't show the top gun cards but here's the overall chart and so what we end up with is right now using the latest drivers from amd and nvidia so that's like amd's got the 24.8.1 drivers and nvidia i believe has 561.09 that came out like last week or something different driver versions may perform better or worse you would think with a game that's been around as long as counter-strike 2 that it would be fully optimized but i think they do code updates frequently enough that sometimes optimizations that did work stop working and things like that uh like one of the interesting things here just the 1080p chart again we've got the 4070 and the 7900 gre are pretty close to tied on average fps but the 7900 GRE had worse 1% lows compared to the 4070. And some of the other 1% lows tend to be all over the place. All right, let's go up to 1440p and see how that does. 1440p, obviously, it's going to be more demanding. It's like 75% more pixels than 1080p, something like that. I don't want to do the math right now in my head. But starting with the lower end cards, you know, the 3050 and the 6600 are cruising right along. Oh, I didn't, I didn't say this on the last chart, but one of the things that was odd is that the 7600 was actually slower than the 6600, which is totally like not the way you would expect it to fall out. I suspect the game is just better optimized for the RDNA 2 architecture rather than RDNA 3 or AMD's drivers are better optimized on RDNA 2 for this particular game or something it's it is just kind of weird 
but I mean, they're all running fast enough, but the 6600 definitely shouldn't be faster than the 7600. Makes me kind of wonder, like, if I grabbed a 6950 XT, would it actually do better than the 7900 XTX or at least come close to it? Maybe. The higher end cards, you know, they easily clearing 120 frames per second, often 240 frames per second. And at the top, we're even getting into the upwards of 400 frames per second. So silly frame rates. I mean, you do have 480 hertz displays these days at up to 1440p resolutions, I believe, or at least 360 hertz, 1440p. You have 500 something at 1080p. Um, and then last but not least, we have the 4K results. And the highest I've heard of for 4K right now is 240 hertz. So anything above 240 would be kind of silly. And none of the cards get there anyway. Uh, we're looking at the 4070 and 7900 GRE. They're sitting right around the 130 to 150 frames per second range. But I should say, like, if you look at the video feeds, you'll see lower frame rates. I noticed, I think partly because the frame rates were so high in Counter-Strike 2 that the the video recording video capture using either nvidia shadow play or just the radeon what is it radeon relive that it tended to drop performance more than i'm used to seeing like 10 to 20 percent at times depending on the gpu and the resolution you're testing so even though the frame rates are lower in the video i benchmarked without the video capture to get the results for the charts here and you can see 4080 super 7900 xtx they're cruising along 200 frames per second. 1% lows are quite a bit below 200 frames per second, but you know, still very fluid. Anyway, I thought this was just kind of fun to look at Counter-Strike 2. Here's the final chart for 4K. Everything got above 60 frames per second, although, you know, the 3050 just barely got there. Um, 7600, the 1% lows were at 60. Everything else is, you know, well into the very playable range. Again, kind of interesting to see how close, like the 7600 and 6600, like those are normally slower cards, but the 6600 should be down closer to the level of the 3050. And so the fact that it's not is interesting. 4060, I would think it would be more than that much faster than the 6600, but again, I don't know. Maybe it's, again, optimizations for the older GPUs are better in Counter-Strike 2 than they are for the new GPUs. Do you like videos like this? Do you like looking at popular games like Counter-Strike 2, even though it's super undemanding? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what else you want me to benchmark. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.